In the climactic scene of one of the most important events in Jewish and world history, Avraham is holding a knife. He's about to sacrifice his son Yitzchak, and the angel of God appears and says to him, Avraham, Avraham, don't touch him. God reveals it was just a test. He wanted Avraham to show the world and himself that he was willing to sacrifice anything for God, even if it didn't make sense. One of the commentators says that the reason that God, through the angel, called Avraham's name twice was to hint to him that he had just reached his full spiritual potential. There was an image of Avraham up in heaven showing the best possible version of him in the spiritual realm. And his physical self down here reached that level. Incredibly hard to do. But what's so interesting about that story is that it's telling us it's not just Avraham that has this ideal version of himself or herself up in heaven. It's every single one of us. And I have a hunch. My hunch is that if any of us had the opportunity to spend 24 hours with the ideal version of ourselves from heaven, down here in the world for a day, we would not believe it. We'd be absolutely convinced that it's us. I mean, you know it's you. Maybe you'd be a little thinner because your ideal version is better about what he or she eats. Maybe if you're a guy, your ideal version has a beard. But putting the externalities aside, I'll bet that we would be shocked that we could possibly be that fill in the blanks, that refined, that kind, that learned, that connected to God, that sensitive. We'd be blown away. Why? Because we sell ourselves short. We don't realize that every single one of us has practically no cap on our level of spiritual accomplishment. Every one of us can be the goat, the greatest of all time. We don't just have the capacity for decent spiritual accomplishments or good ones or mediocre ones. We have the capacity for greatness. It's worth thinking about as we get ready for Yom Kippur and on Yom Kippur itself to try to think, what would the ideal spiritual version of myself up in heaven look like? If I'm honest with myself, if I really put my mind to it, what am I capable of? And then you have to want it because there's nothing more powerful in the world than your rut zone, than your will. And you have to ask. God's there, especially on Yom Kippur of all days. What do you want? Yes, I'm judging you, but what can I do for you? What's your plan for this coming year? Lawyer it up. Say, God, I didn't realize it before, but now I do. I realize what I can accomplish, and I want to do that, and I know that in the path that a person wants to go, God will lead him or her, and I want it, and I'm asking for it. Please do it for me, and then maybe at the end of the holiday, after services, after an Eli, when we come home, before we even eat, if we pass by a mirror, take a quick glance, maybe we'll see a fleeting image of that spiritual giant inside us waiting to break out.